All right. So I read and, you know, attempted to understand this preprint um, about the you know, strategies for cellular deconvolution in the human brain RNA sequencing data, um, because we're trying to apply some of these strategies for the MDD project and um, get RNA fraction out of the data we have, um, using hopefully the data that Matt generated in his preprint. So it's, you know, all coming together. Um, so background, um, kind of the, the whole purpose of all this is to control for cellular composition in heterogeneous tissue when you do RNA sequencing. So different amounts of different types of cells don't sway your results or you can control for that. Um, and then one strategy for doing this is using DNA methylation data. Um, so for that type of data, values are between zero and one, whether it's single cell or bulk data. So you can, it's more easy to compare single cell data to bulk data because you don't have to scale it, which is another, you know, mis like another step of how are you going to make those two types of data comparable. Um, however, this is less popular than RNA-seq. Um, for example, we have RNA-seq data for MDD uh, a project, but we don't have DNA methylation data. Um, it can only work for some cell types. Um, I didn't dig more into that, but they did mention that in the paper. Um, and then there's basically two types of uh, deconvolution, which is reference-free and reference-based, which is what this focuses on. Um, so basically for reference based, you need to know like what the genomic profiles of different cell types look like to determine what types of cells you have, or you know, the proportions of cells that you have. Um, so the goal of this uh, paper was to quantify performance of different methods under different circumstances. Um, you know, so what is the what is the performance of these different methods? Um, different parameters and all of these methods use different algorithms. Um, and they also, they also use several different types of reference data. Um, and they mentioned that some of these are not ideal for different reasons. Um, so the, they compare the performance of these methods based on two different categories. So bias, um, so random mean squared error, um, basically comparing um, the estimates of these algorithms based like predicted cell type fractions based on DNA methylation data that they already have. And then also the amount of information um, produced by these methods. Um, so like, you know, how different do we actually think that different samples are? Um, so they call that concordance some places and then they also call it all R squared, it's R squared. Um, so the main data set that they used is paired DNA, DNA methylation data and RNA-seq data from the NAC of 200 individuals. Um, so the DNA methylation data is used as the truth. And then the RNA-seq data is like um, what we're trying to drive from. So that's how we have like a, a kind of like a truth versus a estimation. Um, and then the three different types of reference data they used um, were single cell RNA-seq from fresh human temporal co cortex. Um, and then single, single nucleus RNA-seq from post-mortem NAC. Um, and then OSM fish imaging of soma, somatosensory cortex of mouse. Um, so those, yeah, those are the three different reference data sets. And then the four different um, algorithms they looked at was the Hausman, which um, they used to make the, the base truth with DNA methylation, Cybersort, which is a machine learning approach, Mind, which is empirical base, and music is the one that they focus on the most. Uh, so it's recursive tree based and uh, weighted non negative least squares. And that's the one that you have parameters for cell size, which is what they focus on the most. All right, so this is the figure one. So this is where they compared um, the performance of these three. I guess they. I guess mind was early in there. Um, so they compare the performance of these three algorithms based uh, on normal, neuronal fractions derived from the methylation data. Um, and basically 
they say that like cyber sort is the most accurate, follows this one to one line the best, but it's um, but music is the most informative. And I guess that's based on how clustered um, the, the points are. And then, uh, but overall they say that like everything's overestimated. So this is proportion neurons is all the way shift, like always like this is shifted, this is shifted. And I guess like cyber sort, not so much, but um, like these are definitely overestimations. Um, so like, I guess the overall takeaway from this figure is that like, this isn't, great. Like, this doesn't tell you a lot. Um, so how did they fix the overestimation? Um, so they hypothesize that neurons are bigger, more transcriptionally active. So they take up more space, they have more RNA. So they're over like overestimated um, by these methods. Um, so to control for that, um, there is a parameter for cell size and music. Um, which is the focus of kind of the rest of this. Um, so they use the OSM fish data from mouse somatosaurid cortex to estimate um, cell size and RNA abundance based on uh, fluorescence imaging, I believe. Um, so they said, yeah, okay. So we saw that the neurons were bigger and more transcriptively active. So they use these new parameters in music um, but they didn't see, it didn't improve my estimation. Um, so this is the results from that. Um, so this is the, so A is the default settings um, of, with uh, the NAC reference data set. So, you know, we don't follow the one-to-one. -one. And then um, we use cell area, we get a closer fit, and then um, total RNA based on the fluorescence imaging, uh, we get it, we get it also like a tighter fit. Um, but I think that like the, if we go back to, this like the R squares aren't that much better. So it's around 0.5 still. Um, so I think that the takeaway from this was that even though that's like very, you know, like the cell size uh, we're pretty good. They're saying that like there's big differences between mice and human. So even though it's the right, it's um, like it's the right region, it's the right, or you know, it's it's the wrong species. So it's like the wrong data, uh, essentially. So they didn't expect to see much improvement with this, and they were right. Um, so here we're trying like the closest data we can get. Um, so it's the human um, postmortem NAC, single cell nucleus RNA seq data. And here they said that the, the, these were like the best results. We see the um, uh, like our best scores. I'm sorry, my zoom's in the way. Um, so, you know, better R squared and arm like uh, RMSE than the temporal data, which is back in figure one. And, um, you know, they improved further by refining the gene set to the most the genes that are most helpful in dif differentiating cell types. Um, so all like all genes, and then we tighten up what genes we use, and we see an, an improvement in scores. My mouse really wants to jump what slide we're on. Um, yeah, so that was kind of I thought that the overall takeaway from the paper was like you know using the most correct data is going to give you the most or to estimate parameters is gonna give you the best results. Um, I thought that the slides were, or like the figures were pretty simple, um, which were, you know, like it's the, just scatter graphs with the same Y axis. So I thought that made it like kind of easy to follow along what was happening. Um, yeah, that was the whole thing. Awesome. Thank you, Luis. Um, yeah.